This is BBC News. I'm Anita McVeigh. These are the top stories developing at 11. Also coming up, prison staff are taking protest action over safety concerns. Hello, very good morning to you. It's Friday the 14th of September. I'm Anita McVeigh and welcome to BBC Newsroom Live. The east coast of America has begun feeling the brunt of Hurricane Florence. More than a million people have been ordered to evacuate their homes as winds of up to 90 miles per hour start to hit land. The hurricane is currently about 25 miles southeast of North Carolina and is due to make landfall at around 5 p.m. our time. 100,000 homes in the Carolinas are currently without power. And these are live pictures from Wilmington Beach, which is already experiencing uh, turbulent conditions, as you can see there. Our North America correspondent, Laura Trevelyan, has this report. Well, in a minute, we're hoping to be live in Wilmington, uh, weather and technology permitting, with CBS correspondent Mola Lenghi. But first, this from Paul Blake in Moorhead City in North Carolina, describing the scene there. And uh, we're going to bring you more on Florence, of course, but let's now uh, bring into this the most powerful typhoon this year, which is roaring towards the main island of the Philippines with wind gusts of up to 160 miles an hour. Super Typhoon Mankut has gathered strength since Monday, tearing down trees and power lines and leaving thousands of people homeless. But millions more live in the areas most at risk. Howard Johnson reports now from one of the provinces expected to be hardest hit by the storm. Now moving on to uh, some of the day's other main news and prison officers in England and Wales are staging a walkout over concerns about staff safety. It's illegal for prison staff to take industrial action. So the Ministry of Justice says it will try to obtain a court injunction to bring the protests to an end. The Prison Officers Association says its members need better protection against violent inmates. The protest comes after an inspection report yesterday found inmates had effectively taken control at HMP Bedford. The Ministry of Justice urged staff to return to work and said in a statement, well, speaking on BBC's Question Time last night, Prisons Minister Rory Stewart spoke of the vital and important work carried out by prison officers and his commitment to them. Rory Stewart, well, let's uh, talk to our correspondent Lisa Hampley, who's at Wormwood Scrubs Prison in West London. Uh, Lisa, bring us up to date with... Uh, any signs of protest there? I mean, it looks pretty quiet behind you at the moment, I have to say. The Kremlin has said it will consider a British request to interview the two suspects in the Salisbury poisoning. Speaking this morning, the Russian government spokesman said they consider it unacceptable to associate the leadership of Russia with what happened in Salisbury in any way. It comes after Number 10 branded an interview with the suspects as deeply offensive to the victims and an insult to the public's intelligence. Well, the journalist who interviewed the two Russians hung up on the Newsnight presenter Kirsty Walk when she was challenged over the interview. Uh, Margarita Simeon, the editor-in-chief of RT, which is funded by the Kremlin, dismissed suggestions that the channel was a tool of Russian propaganda. Uh, Margarita Simeon, the editor-in-chief of RT, uh, talking to Newsnight's Kirsty Walk. Now, it's been revealed that the Church of England has shares in the online retailer Amazon a day after the Archbishop of Canterbury accused the firm of leeching of the taxpayer. Um, let's just return to our coverage now of the protests taking place uh, at prisons around the UK today. Uh, it's over uh, conditions uh, which, des which are described by the uh, Prison Officers Association as very dangerous. The government says it's irresponsible for prison officers to be taking part in a protest. It's illegal for them to do so, and the government says it's going to get an injunction. Well, I can talk now to Mark Fairhope. A series of gas explosions has set fire to dozens of homes in the U.S. state of Massachusetts. The blasts in three separate towns north of Boston are thought to have been caused by the rupture of an overpressurized gas line. Olivia Crellin reports. More than one in five children in England are helping to look after a sick or disabled member of their family, according to research carried out by the BBC and the University of Nottingham. This is BBC News. I'm Anita McVeigh. These are the top stories developing at midday. Hello, good afternoon. It's Friday the 14th of September. I'm Anita McVeigh and welcome to BBC Newsroom Live. 
The east coast of America has begun feeling the brunt of Hurricane Florence as it starts to make landfall. More than a million people have been ordered to evacuate their homes with winds of up to 90 miles per hour battering the area. More than 200,000 homes in the Carolinas are without power currently and storm surges are predicted to bring catastrophic flooding. These are uh, live pictures from Wilmington in North Carolina which is in the path of the storm and already experiencing uh, turbulent conditions as you can see our north america correspondent laura trevelyan has this first report great attitude from tilly and wishing her luck uh, in her new adventures in the u.s black women are ditching chemical relaxers and straighteners in favor of embracing their naturally afro textured hair ahead of world afro day tomorrow our reporter elaine dunkley has been to meet its founder in a moment, it's time for the one o'clock news with Jane Hill. But first, let's take a look at the weather forecast with Ben Rich.